I'm Dr. Ryan DeBelt from The Movement Fix. This is Movement Fix Monday. I'm down in the OC. I'm at Juggernaut HQ. And then joining me today is Quinn, Dr. Quinn Hennick uh, from Clinical Athlete Dark Side Strength, also guest author on Juggernaut many times. And what we're going to talk about this week is about letting the shoulder blade kind of move around during overhead lifting and why you shouldn't pinch it down. And we're going to look at some corrective drills that Quinn is going to take me through. So I'm going to give him the mic because we have one mic. And he's going to take me through some stuff. And uh, here we go. So Ryan and I did a podcast a couple weeks back and we spoke about this misconception that we get a lot where people are coached or they think that we should cue the shoulder blades down and back when we go overhead. And I think this comes from the lifts of uh, a deadlift, for example, where our arms are staying down by our sides. It makes perfect sense to retract and depress our shoulder blades to keep that shoulder stable as a stable platform. But as we go overhead, we actually need our shoulder blade to upwardly rotate. It has to move for us to clear a full overhead position. When we get to about, really the shoulder blade starts to move a little bit right away. When we get to about 90 degrees to 120 degrees of shoulder elevation, the shoulder blade is moving at almost a one-to-one -one ratio as far as humeral elevation to shoulder blade scapular upward rotation. And so cueing it down and back, I mean, this can be a simple test. Try to raise your arms over your head while pinching your shoulder blades down and back. It's almost impossible to reach full range. And so then, then the next question is, well, how do I know how much upward rotation to try to achieve or how do I activate the right muscles to do so? And when we start talking about the upper trap, lower trap, and serratus, those are the three muscles that act as kind of that force couple for upward rotation. They're not really conscious muscles. They're kind of those reflexive stabilizers. So you can't really think about, you know, gaining more upper trap recruitment for upward rotation, especially in lifts like a snatch and clean and jerk, where you need that to happen very quickly. And so one simple cue that we use, turn to the side here, Ryan, Slight bend in the knees, give yourself some slack. And so we're standing here a neutral spine, so we've got a, a little lordosis in, in the cervical spine, some thoracic kyphosis, but just a normal amount, right, and a little bit of lordosis in the lumbar spine. And what we can do is bring our arms to about 90 degrees, and we can reach forward, and so we're protracting the shoulder blades. And I'll have Ryan do that again, come back to center here. And we're not shrugging up, we're just reaching forward. And so we've preset that upward rotation because we need that protraction in conjunction. Now what we can do is maintain that reach as we go overhead. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna put you in that nice middle ground of upward rotation. Show that one more time from the front. Just so we can see, so we reach forward and we maintain that reach. And that puts us in that nice mid range. Now it's not a shrug up to your ears where we're like listening to our shoulders. And so that reach cue can put you in kind of that mid range. That's that active shoulder that we talk about a lot. And so this is an open chain, right? But sometimes it's very advantageous to close the chain or fix our hand to a surface so we can really feel that. It's a little bit of a, a proprioceptor. And so we use a move called the T push up. So Ryan, go ahead and get in a push up position. And so you guys have seen kind of the, the scapular push-up or the, or the push-up plus, and that has some utility of just teaching scapular awareness, but we're going to kind of take that another level. And so I'm going to have Ryan protract. He's going to reach away. So that's exactly what he did while he was on his feet. And from this point, he's going to maintain the reach of the down arm as he opens up and rotates away. And this is a T push-up. This arm can go overhead, that's the T, but it doesn't have to. The goal here is maintaining, go back to push-up position, is maintaining that reach that you created here, okay? So again, we're active through that down shoulder, reaching away, and now we get some frontal plane stability of that shoulder blade. What we're avoiding is that. So letting that shoulder collapse into your ear, or shoving the shoulder forward, so we're stressing the anterior joint capsule, and we see that a lot in people that go overhead. Their shoulder starts to instantly rotate, and you see some of this. If we work on stabilizing that shoulder in the frontal plane, I think that will translate reflexively to that upper rotation. Yeah. I'll give Ryan back the mic. <laughs> Perfect, so if you have a limitation going overhead, and you're pinching your shoulder blades back, 
we can work on the reaching as sort of the way to cue that to happen. And then you can kind of load it by doing that T push up. And then maybe you go work on your snatch balances, other things to start ingraining that in the snatching pattern. Boom. So from the Juggernaut HQ down in the OC, that's, this, that's what we got for you this week on Move It Fix Monday. Hey, if you don't already follow the Facebook page, make sure to go to facebook.com slash the Move It Fix. You can follow me on Instagram at the Move It Fix. You can follow Quinn at, what's your Instagram? Quinn.Hennick. Quinn.Hennick. DPT. DPT, and I'll put that in the description. And you can also make sure to check out Quinn's listing of clinicians and healthcare providers who know about lifting at the clinical, ath at clinical athlete. So make sure to check that out. I'll put that uh, description down below in the blog. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.